Hello, I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. You know, back in the early 1970s, when I was a graduate student in the School of Criminology at the University of California, I, yeah, as I have mentioned, as I, as I recall, in the very first in present segment, I was in agony. I was working as a volunteer at San Quentin Prison in the psychiatric unit doing psychotherapy with murderers and rapists. And I felt, uh, as much as that was a valuable and rewarding experience, that this is not how I wanted to spend my life. I wanted to make a shift. I wanted to immerse myself, not with murderers and rapists and people suffering from every form of sociopathy and psychopathology, but rather to uh, expose myself to the most creative, insightful, mystical, psychic, intuitive people that I could find. And with a little help from invisible resources, I managed to make that transition back in, I think, about 1972. So, for the last nearly half a century, I have uh, managed to uh, live a life in which I've exposed myself to uh, roughly a thousand people uh, in the most intimate kind of one-on-one -on -one conversations, sharing with large audiences of tens of thousands, maybe millions of people ultimately, uh, the highest wisdom coming from the mouth of living human beings that, that I was able to do. And after half a century of uh, that sort of exposure, I think a little bit has rubbed off on me. And some of that can be transmitted simply because it's something I've been exposed to. And a lot of it is at the non-verbal level. And I don't want to make much of it because, as I've said earlier, I don't consider myself a guru except in the sense of the actual word guru, gee, you are you. I don't want you to be me uh, by any means, but I'm perfectly uh, happy and delighted even to be able to share with you uh, on many different levels, vibrational levels, intellectual levels, emotional levels, uh, the level of humor, the level of just uh, good-natured presence, presence with you, which is why I have called this particular series In Presence. If I can share that, I'm happy to do it because it opens me up to receive more, actually. <laughs> so, to the extent that those of you who are out there are able to share any bit of it, through your heart, through your wisdom, uh, you will benefit as well. The more that you can spread around the uh, wisdom that you find, not just the wisdom, but the love that you find, not just the wisdom and the love, but also the capacity for higher consciousness that you discover within yourself, to the extent that you can share that with others, then you also are able to receive more. Now, one of my viewers who uh, has, has made many comments, uh, and I haven't really responded much, is a fellow named or who calls himself Soteriologist. And I had to look up the meaning of Soteriology because I didn't know it's in theology, it refers to the study of salvation. And he has raised a very interesting point that I'd like to address, which is, uh, in some of the exercises that I've shared with you in the in present segments, <laughs> I suggested that you open yourself up to all of humanity. Imagine that. All of humanity on this planet, or at times I'm sure I've suggested, and if I haven't, I ought to, that you open yourself up to the whole universe. 
And why? Because that's who you are. <laughs> If, if we're to believe the mystics. And he's pointed out, he said, no, no, don't do that. I don't want to open up to all of that. That's terrible stuff out there. There's a lot of reasons not to be open to at least a good half of it because it's negative, because it is uh, disheartening, because it will pull me down. What he, he's arguing that what we should do is open ourselves up to, one might say, to the light, to that which is good, to that which is true and beautiful. That's where our salvation lies. Uh, it's very much, I think, he's arguing along the lines of the book of Deuteronomy in the Bible, which says, I have set before you a choice. You can choose life or you can choose death. So, choose life. And I know I made that choice myself very dramatically you know, when I stopped my education in criminology after I got my master's degree and switched over with great effort and great struggle to the study of parapsychology, higher consciousness as I conceived of it uh, in, in my own way at the time because I had the good fortune of being able to design my own <laughs> doctoral degree program. Now, there's a paradox there. There is a paradox. How can one be one with the universe, open to the whole universe, one with humanity, one with every precious human soul, and at the same time not come under the influence of all the negativity that is out there? And uh, I guess you'd have to say it's a subtle trick. Each of us will learn to do it if we are successful in our own way. And I guess I can say a few little things about it. One is that uh, I'm something of a Taoist by nature. I've uh, designed the Rainbow Yin Yang logo, which you see in every episode of uh, In Presence and the New Thinking Aloud series. And one of the principles of the Rainbow Yin Yang, obviously, is that there is no such thing as absolute good or absolute evil. Every good thing has a little bit of negativity, at least, attached to it. And the most evil things that you can imagine, well, some good comes out of them. But it goes even a little deeper than that. Consider this. Um, let me put it this way, and I think um, my friend soteriologists may agree with me here. I know we disagree on an awful lot of things, but I, I want you to know that I you know, read your comments and I appreciate them. Uh, some people have criticized you for being a bit negative on the comments section, and you responded, I think, appropriately by saying uh, you think I might appreciate some criticism, and indeed I do. If one considers, as my uh, friend Jim Driscoll does, who I've interviewed about Shakespeare and about tragedy and about uh, the nature of evil, that there are revelations in the Western intellectual canon, and these revelations come not exclusively uh, from biblical sources or Abrahamic sources. Sometimes revelations come through the great literary figures of our culture, the great writers from Dante, from Milton, from Shakespeare, that these great writers reveal to us the depths of the human spirit and even the depths of God, the depths of the divine. And what we see in these great writers is that they have an ability to understand not just the goodness of the human soul, but also the negative side. They expose themselves to it. Nobody can write more eloquently about evil than Shakespeare or Milton or Dante or other great writers. 
So to be able to understand the depths to which the human soul can sink is what makes a great writer. Not that everybody viewing this video expects to be a great writer, but don't we all expect uh, in our own way to achieve a measure of wisdom? And doesn't wisdom to some degree imply an understanding of the folly, the flaws, the hatred, the negativity, the anguish, the frustration, and sometimes even the evil that the human spirit is capable of? Isn't that important for us to know? I don't think I would be the person I am today if I hadn't spent those months inside the psychiatric unit of San Quentin Prison in intimate conversation with murderers and rapists. It's not that I advocate becoming a person like that or opening yourself up to behaving the way they behave. Certainly not. I think I've emphasized over and over again the words of Rudolf Steiner, the great Austrian mystic who said, take two steps toward developing your own character before you take one step toward power or knowledge. And still, it's important to recognize that while we don't wish to behave like <laughs> every negative person that we see out there, or even any of them, it, it's not, we can't numb ourselves, we can't wall ourselves off from that. I think we need to be open to experiencing the, especially the pain, the frustration, the anguish, the sadness and sorrow that's out there in the world. It's good not to wall ourselves off from that. And I have to say, even though I really do make an effort to be a compassionate person, that tendency of the human nervous system to go numb is very real. And it's out of that numbness that great evil can occur. In fact, I think the worst evils that have taken place in the history of this planet have been done in the name of fighting evil done in the name of goodness. That's the paradox. So, we need to be open to what's going on, eyes wide open, but always with a direction towards the highest, the best. As Plato uh, once pointed out, seek truth, seek goodness, seek justice, seek beauty. But be open to the wholeness because that wholeness ultimately is who we are. We are children of the universe. We were born out of this whole universe. If it wasn't for the entire universe, we wouldn't be here at all. And I'll leave you with that thought. Thank you once again so much for being with me.